behavior. Um, you've argued that heart disease is directly linked to human behavior, and yet behavior is something that is very difficult to change. Perhaps you could tell us more about that. Well, no, the problem here is that cardiovascular disease, which is the number one killer today, has a lot to do with misbehavior. I'm not criticizing, but cigarette smoking, obesity, lack of exercise, hypertension not treated, these are aspects that we could do something about it. And unfortunately, we are not having as physicians the impact that we would like to have. So the question is, how do you make people to be aware of the risks that these factors carry with and how they can change lifestyle? And I think it's possible. First of all, uh, we believe that the ideal age is very young. It's like children, very young, age three to six, where you can really educate them uh, as we are doing with 70 hours of uh, education on health as a priority. And the children carry this through. Thus far, we are following them until age 20. Right. Those intervene. And we have a short follow-up thus far, but it appears to work. So I think this is the ideal age. Children capture what you tell them and they carry through. Now, in terms of that, yeah, go ahead. No, I was going to say, it, it's interesting um, that you talk about children, you're talking about the younger generation. Um, of course, we have the millennials, we have Generation Z, we have generations coming up who are digital natives. Um, I understand that you've created an app uh, at Mount Sinai, yeah. which is an app that helps people, it helps to educate well, people. Well, this is for the, more for the adults. Right. And that this is an app that <clears throat> basically what we do is I explain the risk factors I ask a few questions, and the questions give me the answer of what is your risk factor profile, right. what is your prognosis, then I, I make like, uh, this is uh, your task, and there is task A, what you should do, and we have task B if you don't do it. So basically what we have is, a, is an approach that it takes 15, 20 minutes that really is quite helpful. and, and, and and the app is actually free, so it's very easy to get in. And this is how we educate people who want to know more about health and cardiovascular health in particular. Okay. I understand that you also, uh, from Mount Sinai, you have um, a, an initiative entitled Healthy Cities. Perhaps you could tell us what, what Well, that is. this is different, yeah. What we are doing is to have, we have a city here in Catalonia, uh, Cardona, where we are trying to uh, move the city into health from many avenues. And if this works, it will be a concept that can be carried out to other cities. We deal with children there, with adults, with grandparents, with um, pathways to run, with soccer field, with a new auditorium for education. It's really to create an environment or a culture that is with health. I hope we succeed. It's a, very, it's a great challenge, but I think it can be done. Um, of course, we're, we're here with the Global Alumni Reunion. We have 2,000 alumni with us. Um, any last words of advice for business leaders? Is there something that business leaders can do to be promoting Well, general I think health? business leaders have the responsibility to do something for society other than their business. I always tell this to the medical community. Right. So I think what I would say is to please put a little bit of effort to make things better. Start with your family. Start with your corporation, you know, for the employees, that they can have a system of health, and this will then be transforming and, and growing. So my, my, my view would be, uh, is an issue of responsibility, not only yourself, but even with the environment that you work. And I yeah. think that's the best way I would start.